So let's start off by pointing out the obvious. This is a pretty big chunk of metal, and probably unsurprising, given that I do do machining down here, I'm going to be machining it pretty soon. It's nothing hugely complicated, just a few holes and pockets, but I also plan to face it, and hopefully do that in one operation. And that's going to present a bit of an issue when actually holding it down to the mill. The bar of metal is roughly 150 by 300 mils, and with the vise that I have, it can only hold about 100, 110 mil of stock. 140 maximum if you take all the jaws out, and that simply isn't enough. Now it is possible to flip the jaws and put it on the back, that's what those threaded holes are for, but even if I did do that, I'd be faced with about 120 mils of overhang on each side, and that's simply more than I'm comfortable with. Plus, I'm almost certain that the top surface of the jaws that the part will be sitting on isn't exactly flat, or at least parallel to the main body. Obviously, it's not a hugely expensive vise, and I can't imagine that this was at the top list of priorities when grinding it in, so if I was going to do that, I'd probably want to get that checked in and ground at least flat. And that brings us to now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of those two-piece split vices. It should allow me the flexibility to clamp large pieces of work to the table, and that should, if everything goes to plan, it should allow me to face it in one operation. Now in order to make it, I have a spare piece of 50mm thick, 1020 grade steel, and what I'll do is I'll mark it up and get a few pieces cut out. Now between you and me, I'm not exactly sure if this would have been my first choice of material, at least size wise, but the new angle grinder definitely was able to chew through them, but I guess even at the end I did have to break out the hacksaw. Alright, and that's our three pieces of stock cut out. I'll have two pieces for the moving jaw, at least one end, and one for the fixed jaw. So before I go any further, I do want to point out that what I'm doing here is a bit of an experimental design. I'm sure we've all seen this old Tony's design, and you know what, it's actually a pretty good vice. So good in fact that I built it twice. The first time I made it was about four years ago for a milling machine that wasn't mine, and as much as I'd like to show you a photo of it, unfortunately it seems to have been lost to time. The second one I made was for when I used my Sherline lathe as a milling machine. I attached a third axis to it, and the easiest way to get a vise onto it was to make a two-piece vise. It was a great little bit of kit, but what I found out after using it for a little bit was I was getting a bit of jaw lift. Now, I was only getting it on parts that were being popped up on parallels and held by the top bit of the jaw, but it was definitely there. And lift in the jaws is just bad news all round. It can significantly reduce the clamping force on the part, and that's why my mill vise uses an angle lock style, and the nut pulls the jaw downwards. The absolute last thing that you want is for your part to fly out of the vise. And that, well fingers crossed, is where my design improves upon the old design. But before I can do anything else, I need to quickly clean up the parts. My angle grinding is okay, but those parts still came out very rough. So to clean the parts up, I'll first come in with the face mill to remove a bulk of the material, and I can take a 3 or 4 mil depth of cut. The three cutters can remove a huge amount of material, but they don't leave the best of finishes. And 
And once the side is now flat, I can now come in with a fly cutter with a button insert and clean it up and give it a mirror finish. I'll give it a quick deeper and then we can machine the other sides. Alright, one down, three to go. And that's the three pieces cleaned up. Did produce a fair amount of mess though. I managed to do all the important faces, but I'll tackle the sides later. I don't currently have an end mill long enough and fly cutting tool pieces hasn't always gotten me the greatest of finishes. For now though, we can now start to machine the moving jaw, which I'll first mark up. This design will have a large cutout at the back and as a result we're going to need to remove a big chunk of material. Now the face mill that I've been using is just the wrong shape for doing this type of cut so I'll have to resort to using a roughing end mill to do most of the work. Roughing end mills are pretty awesome because they can come in and remove a huge amount of material in one pass except they produce a pretty rough finish, so we'll have to come in later with the finishing end mill and clean it up. Now because I'm removing so much material, I'm going to flood it with the coolant. The coolant should stop the end mill from burning up, and it should also help carry away the chips. And I've got to say, the milling machine, with its new motor and it being full of lead, is really chewing through all that material, and I'm really impressed with how it's going. Alright, and that's the roughing done. I'll come in with a finishing end mill and clean it up. Well, and that's the bottom side done. Definitely wasn't my sharpest end mill, but it looks really nice. Next, I need to machine a 40-ish degree slope on the back edge. That'll be for the clamping mechanism. Now, in a perfect world, I'd machine this with the tilt vise, and that would be that. But unfortunately, I don't have a proper one. But what I do have is this old drill press vise with a piece of round bar bolted to the front. It does a great job with light machining, so fingers crossed it can handle this. The round bar will get clamped in the big vise, and that will tilt the other vise at the correct angle. And to do the machining, I'll be using the fly cutter with an aluminium cutting insert. The inserts are sharp, and it should keep the cutting force as low as possible. The only real issue that I have is these inserts don't last that long. Carbide's not really the greatest material for doing interrupted cuts with, and for what it's worth, these inserts aren't really made for machining steel. With that said, it still produces a really good finish. So the next thing I need to do is machine a dimple into the face, and I'll start by drilling a small 4mm pilot hole. I'll then swap over to a 20mm ball end mill and then start to plunge down. 
Now, almost immediately, it was pretty obvious that this setup wasn't going to be rigid enough. I mean, it was probably obvious beforehand, but it should be pretty clear now. But unfortunately, I don't have much of an alternative, so I put on some noise-cancelling earmuffs, closed the workshop door, and went to town on it. And eventually, it was machined. The final thing left to do is add two holes at the front so I can bolt a set of soft jaws on. And that is the first part done. Next we can start to machine the bottom part of the moving jaw. I'll first machine a step on each side to allow it to slide under the top piece. And doing this is pretty straightforward with the DRO. Next, I need to make a cutout to match the radius left by the end mill on the top part. I could have folded in by hand, but I think a 45 degree chamfer does the job. And the parts now fit together really nicely. There is a little bit of movement, but it's still a very good fit. We can now finish off the rest of the locking mechanism. Now originally the plan was to bore a 16mm hole through the body for a piece of rod. But it quickly became obvious that I'm not going to be able to do this. I'd need a 4 jawed chuck for the lathe and I don't have one yet. This should be a great example of it looking really easy in SolidWorks but actually making it in real life? Yeah, that's not so easy. So instead, I had to think of a different, more realistic approach. So what I'll do is I'll put the part back in the tilt vise, and then I'll plunge down with an end mill to create a flat spot. Okay, well, I wasn't really planning that, but you know what, this is a pretty good example of jaw lift causing a lot of trouble. You can probably see just how cantered over that moving jaw is, and how little is actually holding on. There's a good reason why I don't use this vice for milling anymore. But unfortunately, I don't have a good alternative, so I'll tighten this one up as much as I can, and I'll back off the pressure. Definitely a really cool example, but this part is going to need fixing. With the flat spot now made, I'll go in with a 4mm drill and I'll drill that through the whole body. I'll then follow it halfway with a 12mm drill. I can now flip it around and then use that hole that I drilled before for alignment and then I can go in with the big end mill.
Okay, the end mill was a little bit long for this mill, so I just cut it down. Might cut down on the flex, and it might make machining this a little bit nicer. The final thing left to do is clean up that top face and then drill and counterbore two holes for some M10 screws. And that is the bottom piece done. We can now finish up the moving jaw assembly by machining up the locking balls, which I'll make using the ball turner on the lathe. The first piece I'll be making is a 20mm ball with an M8 thread tapped all the way through it. The second piece is just a half sphere with an 8mm through hole. And those are the two parts done. The half sphere is polished up, but I left the ball a little bit rough to allow it to give a bit of bite when it gets tightened. The final thing left to do is machine the fixed jaw. Now the cuts are pretty straightforward, but it just means removing a lot of material. And you can probably see here, the coolant does a great job at removing all those small chips produced by the roughing end mill. Definitely had to remove a lot of material, and it definitely took a lot of life out of this end mill. And that is the main parts of the vise now done. All in all, it actually looks really nice. So let's get it all assembled and see if it works. As you can probably guess, the ball sits down in that recess that we cut on the bottom, and the screw will pull the top jaw forwards and downwards. In effect, this will make the clamping action, but it will also make sure that the jaw doesn't lift. 
And that's because the jaw is being pulled down into the workpiece. I still would have preferred to use a proper pin rather than a ball, but I think for a vise this size, it will still work. And of course the rough texture that I left on the ball means that there's enough bite on it so that it doesn't just spin in the socket. The final thing left to do is make a set of aluminium soft jaws, and we can then test it out and see if it works. And just to simplify all the machining, I'll set up a vice stop, and doing it this way means I don't have to reset the DRO every time I change out the part. Alright, and that's the two-piece vise set up. It's now clamped down to the table, and the jaws now only have to move about 2 or 3 millimeters in order to lock everything all very tightly down to the table. It's not so tight that I'm at risk of breaking my T-slots, but it's tight enough that I'm pushing this with all my body weight, and I can't get it to move. All in all, this is going to be perfect for doing facing, drilling, and a few pockets. I think I might have to raise this piece up on a few parallels just to be able to machine the top, and in doing so, I can't see any jaw lift. And that's going to be about it for the moment. I'd start to machine it right now, but unfortunately I don't have a fly cutter big enough to do this in one big pass. So you're going to have to wait a few weeks before I make that, and then we can get stuck into machining this big piece of steel, and then you'll be able to see this big vice in action. Until then, thank you very much for watching, hope you learned something new, see you next week.